Uh, you have to have thick skin. You have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. And as the church continues to grow, people are driving miles to hear the truth. Yes, I drove an hour to get here, but it's worth it, and we try to do it every week. I think we've definitely developed a reputation here. I think folks know who we are. Uh, they're familiar with what we teach. Um, <clears throat> I think there's still a lot of territory to be covered. I think things are going wonderful. Right. And I really think that Johnny is one of the best preachers I ever heard in my life. And he's got two sons that are going to follow in his steps. So I wouldn't want to be anywhere but here. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. I despise, hate, detest, and loathe the Church of Christ and everything about it. I, I hate them. I really do. The better I get to know them, the more I hate them. I, I want to rid the world of the churches of Christ. See why the atheists don't like the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services are 11 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. at 823 Starling Avenue. Watch them on TV in Martinsville at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and on Sunday on WGSR. You're traveling to another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Your next stop... After losing the debate to the KKK, Michael went to school. Just being a preacher in general is not a job for sissies. Uh, you have to have thick skin. You have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending, was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. In the Church of Christ, we teach that the Bible teaches that we can intermarry and we therefore we will intermingle. We'll also have a very diverse future. When I first heard about the Church of Christ and what they were teaching, they made me believe that they were actually teaching the truth. And if you're teaching the truth, there should not be an issue with black or white. So I decided to visit here, and that's when I realized that they are teaching the truth, and black or white, regardless of what your nationality is, is not an issue. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18, and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. And as the church continues to grow, people are driving miles to hear the truth. Yes, I drove an hour to get here, but... It's worth it, and we try to do it every week. I think we've definitely developed a reputation here. I think folks know who we are. Uh, they're familiar with what we teach. Um, <clears throat> I think there's still a lot of territory to be covered. I think things are going wonderful. Right. And I really think that Johnny is one of the best preachers I ever heard in my life, and he's got two sons that are going to follow in his steps. So I wouldn't want to be anywhere but here. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. I despise, hate, detest, and loathe the Church of Christ and everything about it. I, I hate them. I really do. The better I get to know them, the more I hate them. I, I want to rid the world of the Churches of Christ. See why the atheists don't like the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services are 11 a.m. and Wednesday at 7 p.m. at 823 Starling Avenue. Watch them on TV in Martinsville at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and on Sunday on WGSR. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a word from the Lord. James over here with you, and uh, here with Michael Robertson tonight. We are 
gearing up for our 10th meeting that's going to start Monday night. And if you uh, uh, haven't made plans to uh, come out and visit with us, it's a new location. We're down here in Reedsville. And uh, so we hope that you'll come out and visit with us, uh, brought to you by the Church of Christ and uh, Word of the Lord TV program. And we'll be talking more about that in just a moment, but uh, we want to give you our contact information. Uh, you can reach me at 276-340-2653, or you can uh, uh, email me at a word from the word at gmail.com. Uh, 250 the Boulevard is where we meet in Eden, and uh, we meet on Sundays at uh, 10 a.m. and 11 a.m., 10 a.m. for Bible study, 11 a.m. for worship, and then we, uh, uh, did I say right? No. 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship. Boy, I tell you what, I can't get it. All right, 9 a.m. for Bible study, 10 a.m. for worship. And uh, then Sun, uh, Thursday nights at 7. I'm uh, kind of running ragged tonight. We've been working on the tent and uh, trying to get all this uh, information put together. And uh, just for example, one of the things that we're uh, going to be uh, showing you, this is one of the things we're going to be passing out uh, and it's kind of what Mark was talk, t touching on tonight. You know, we never passed a plate mm -hmm. at our tent meetings, which is a very unusual. I think anybody that's, that normally goes to tent meetings, they know that, you know, that's, that's a very uh, strange thing uh, when it comes to uh, tent meetings, tent revivals. Generally, they put these things up and they milk the community for all they're worth, but we never, never charge any money, Micah. And, you know, James, I know there are a lot of things that people could be doing uh, through the next couple of weeks. But here you have an opportunity to come and actually hear gospel preaching. And that's, that's another uh, distinguishing point from our tent meetings, from the other gospel or other meetings. Uh, they're not gospel meetings because that's just the thing. You're not getting any gospel right. when you go to these places. Uh, Caleb and Drew and I, we went to a massive tent meeting there in Elizabethan, Tennessee. And the guy, the uh, preacher there, Ralph Sexton, he got up and he... He went to Luke chapter 11, I believe it is, and discussed maybe three verses from Luke chapter 11, and then the rest of the time was spent talking about his dad and his uncle, and his. it was pretty much his, his uncle's testimony. And we're sitting there, you know, we're three young men going to preaching school, and we're trying to figure out, okay, what does this have to do with Luke chapter 11? And, and, you know, and his uncle wasn't even there. Right, yeah, the uncle's, <laughs> you know, the uncle's not there, the dad's not there, and it's just, you know, all it is is they throw a little Bible in there, and then they throw in an emotional story to get you going. You know, this this was right before the altar call. Right. So they get this emotional going right before the altar call. And then two nights later when we were there, guess what you ended up having to do? You end up have to pay for those stories that they're telling. And then the other night, the other night that we were there was a bunch of uh, help Jerusalem, help Jerusalem, uh, you know, mis mis uh, conceptions and mis uh, misinterpretations of scripture. So, friends, with our tent meetings, as, as most of you are aware. You are coming to hear what the Bible actually has to say, and then on top of that, it's free of charge. Right. And all the literature, DVDs, uh, books, pamphlets, tracts, mm -hmm. you know, whatever that we have is, is free, mm -hmm. you know. And so uh, all these people that want to be have, have free salvation, you know, oh, they don't want to do anything for salvation, yet right. they won't come out and get the true salvation yeah. from the gospel. They'll, they'll pay money uh, for a false gospel mm -hmm. and won't come out for the free true gospel. Yeah. So uh, and that's kind of a contradiction within itself. You right. know, the the Baptists and everybody else they believe in the all sufficiency of uh, the grace of God that you know everything was taken care of on the cross. But yet, since we're on this topic of money, if that is the case, you know everything was taken care of on the cross. There's nothing for me to do. Then I can stop tithing. Right. You know I can stop giving. Right. Uh, I wouldn't even have to go to services anymore if it's if it's all based upon the all sufficiency of the cross. Which I, I believe in that that you know everything that was needing to be done on the part of Christ was done on the cross. Right. But that does not remove me from the equation and my responsibility. Right. As to, you know, being obedient to the gospel. Right. God did his part. He did all all the work to get everything ready. That's right. Now you still have to come. Yeah. You know, but but uh, these uh, denominational uh, doctrines, these false gospels, what they do, they actually make people lazy, I think. You oh, know, yeah. it's no reason why it's it's no wonder why you know our society is lazy. Yeah. Because, you know, they've been told, they go to church and tell, well, you don't got to do nothing. Do not, do, get, get it for free. Get it for free. It's religious welfare. Yeah. It's basic, that's right. That's good. what it is. Religious welfare. I got so, that from Dad, so I, so, I, can't, uh, I can't take it. Uh, well, anyway, it was true. I, I, so uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it and make it my own, and, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to give credit. No. But that, that's really what it is, you know. And so what we're saying, friends, if, if you want some uh, the true gospel and not have to pay a dime, I mean, not even a penny, you know, you need to come to the gospel tent, and 
Uh, it's going to be set up. Uh, Mark showed you a, a, a map there. I think everybody knows where this is. Now, I don't have the, the satellite map, so it's kind of it's a little different to uh, recognize where it is. But everybody knows the stoplight right here uh, by Walmart, right, just right north of Walmart, where Scale Street comes into 14. There's a stoplight there. Go two and a half miles to the next stoplight. It's right there in the middle of nowhere. It's Barry, Barrymore Road. Uh, I think probably everybody knows where it is. They just maybe don't associate it with the street. You know, yeah, most people in, in an area, they generally associate landmarks rather than streets. You know, I don't know what road that is, but there's a, there's a store there where it's it's, um, it's uh, the Cornerstone Market or uh, maybe it used to be called Stone Store, I think, that maybe some, some local might call, might call and uh, uh, clarify that. But if you turn right, if you're coming from Reedsville, you're going north, turn right, Go just about three tenths of a mile. I mean, just around a little dog leg, and and really, I think once you top that hill, you could probably see the tent mm -hmm. uh, 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 over there in that, in that land. It's right at that intersection of uh, Barrymore Road and Harrison Crossroad Loop, and uh, that is a busy, busy little uh, 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 road there. I didn't I didn't think uh, when uh, Mr. Jack Petty, who let us have the land, I don't think you mind us saying that because. Uh, he's telling everybody about the tent too, but um, uh, Mr. Jack Petty's not a member of the Church of Christ, but he's uh, he's one of these individuals that that understands that what we're doing is is a truth, mm -hmm. and I appreciate his generosity. But he's, you know, he said, well, James, he said uh, you can use this land. He said, It'll, you know, people know where it is. Mm -hmm. So, uh, friends, if you're in this area, you know, if you've been around this area very long at all, I think you'll know where this place is. So, even though it's kind of off the main road, um, don't let the site fool you. Uh, it, it'll be an easy, easy drive to come out and hear the truth. And I, I think, Mike, Mike, I think that uh, some people are going to come out and maybe uh, because it's not in town. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just kind of a different, uh, more of a country environment. Uh, um, we were, uh, when uh, Charles was asking me about where the tent's going to be, and I, I told him, he said, you know, I don't really know if I really like the location. But, you know, people came out, the people who wanted to know the truth, they came out to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not I'm not saying that I'm Jesus, you know, but what we we bring in the gospel of Jesus. They understood what yeah, Jesus represented. Yes, and so uh, uh, the idea that they that it was something different from what they'd been being taught, mm -hmm. you know, all the religious uh, corruption and hypocrisy that was going on their day, same thing today. Yeah. And there's a lot of people in this area that watch our programs, uh, you know, they, they know what we're they know what we're talking about. They know. The, uh, what we're representing here, and I believe they're going to come out, and they're going, you know, they're going to uh, uh, make this a big effort. So I really hope that you know we have nice weather for it, and mm -hmm. look forward to seeing everybody that you know has kind of been on the sidelines watching. Uh, why do you think, Mike? I mean, we, we kind of talk about this all the time, off and on. But what is it that that you think holds people back from actually going ahead and obeying the gospel, becoming members of the, of the Lord's Church? Well. I guess I guess you're kind of looking at it from you know standpoint of the you know the individual who's allowed us to have the land you know right. when you're when you're, when you're and, talking, and a lot of other individuals yeah, too you know, and, you know you know like I was uh, gonna say when you, when you're talking about him you know I had some other individuals that were running through my mind uh, you know there's a uh, an individual that works at the TV station in in Morrisville Virginia mm -hmm. and you know he's a member of the Lord's Church uh, has you know fallen away is you know air, an Aryan brother and you know I have to see him every Wednesday. Not only do I have to see him, but he has to see me, and you know he has to sit there uh, in the control room and listen to the sermon that I'm presenting, and you know, and he's right. uh, he's one of these ones who is very helpful to us. You know, sometimes he'll uh, feed me information that he's seen on the internet, you know, about this topic and whatever. Right. Uh, I was doing some information on marriage, divorce, and remarriage, and he helped me out with some information uh, that he read on the internet, and I'm just, you know, I think about those type of individuals, and it's very sad. To think that here you are helping God's people, but it's not helping you at all. You know, it, it's not at all going to be uh, be brought over to your account when you stand before God on the day of judgment. Right. You know, you're not going to be able to say, "Well, you know, I helped Johnny and I helped James and Mike and Mark and whoever. You know, I helped them out." But did you ever come to you know? Did you ever come to God? Did you ever obey the gospel? Or having obeyed the gospel and fallen away, have you? return back to the fold and it's just you know uh you know that individual he's told me several times it's just i'm i'm just being lazy about it you know he mm -hmm. knows you know he says that he knows that he needs to come back but he just i don't know there's just something in him that 
he just won't do it. Right. Well, and this idea, you know, Jesus said, you know, uh, he that is for me, you know, or you either for me or against me. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if you're for me, then, you know, you're actually in fellowship with Christ. But if you're against mm -hmm. him, you're already, you know, scattering abroad. You're actually not really helping mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the long run. Yeah. Uh, the Bible says that uh, the, the, the righteousness of the righteous man will be forgotten if he turns from his righteous ways. Right. And the wickedness of the wicked man will be forgotten if he, if he becomes righteous. So uh, don't think that the good things you're doing, you're going to pave your way to heaven. And, and a lot of people that I'm talking to, uh, and, and like I said, not just about this one individual that we mentioned, but um, uh, there's a lot of people, I think they know you know, what their faith's going to be. Mm -hmm. And I'm always trying to figure out, well, what is that one little thing? Because, friends, this is how much we really love the truth. We want, we're want we trying to figure out that one little thing. You know, maybe we're not saying something right or maybe we're not showing something right or demonstrating uh, the truth in such a way where it finally clicks. Right. You know, um, uh, Paul said that his job was to open the, the, the eyes of your understanding. Right. Uh, Acts 26. And that's really what we're trying to do is open the eyes of understanding it, but you know if I don't really know what you know what the little hang up is, right. you know, right. a good teacher is always trying to figure out how to how to reach all of these different pupils and students, and and that's what we're kind of we're in that position of being teachers. I mean, we're teaching the word of God, and so I'm trying to figure out well what is it that would that will help this one person because mm -hmm. if I can help that person, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to help somebody else too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you know, I think some of it too goes back to the the realm of hypocrisy. Though to a to a great degree, they may see what we're doing on television and understand that you know what we're presenting is in fact the truth, but in fact being hurt so many times by religious people. Right. You know, it, it kind of goes you know over to the uh, you know to that mindset of uh, the 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 with the racial situation. You know, they may understand. Okay, times are changing. You know, not uh, all white people might think you know a certain way towards black people. Not all black people think a certain way toward, uh, towards white people. But having certain things happen to them, it's always in the back yeah. of their mind yeah. that you know this person has the capability of doing this. Right. Which you know that's that really is the case with with anybody. And I think about uh, a friend of mine. He's out in the world, but he's actually a Baptist preacher's son, and he has uh, really no religious affiliation, even though he grew up in a preacher's home. And the reason being is because, and he's told me this, is you know he, he saw the membership. He saw the elders and how they were living and, and the elders' children and how they were living. And you know to a great degree, he kind of you know, gave him some insight into his uh, rearing. His dad was having him do certain things, and not because it's what the Bible teaches or that God would be happy with you doing this, but it was because, well, you're a preacher's son. And it's, you know, it's the idea, you have to do this so that the members and everybody else will be okay and be happy. Right. Well, you know, if that's, if that's all I'm doing it for <laughs> is just to make everybody else happy and not, you know, the Heavenly Father happy, then why should I do it? Why should I right. feel any responsibility, you know, to do that? So in looking at, you know, his religious surrounding, it's, you know, it has just completely turned him off. And, you know, he's another one of those. We've discussed uh, his, his lifestyle and everything like that, and I've laid it out from Scripture, and I just, I've asked him. You know, according to the Bible, if you were to die today, where would you go? And he says, "Oh, I I know that I'd be on my way to hell." Yeah. But it's you know it's just that that history that he's had with religion and you know worldly Christianity, and it's just it's it's a great hindrance. Right. Well, I was thinking about this verse when you were talking about that in Galatians one ten. Paul said, "Do I now persuade men or God, or mm -hmm. do I seek to please men? For right. if I yet please men, I should not be a servant of Christ." Right. And that's that's the whole thing when you're in this in this religion uh, to please men and I think that's, that goes into what Mark was talking about with the uh, 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 Miss Osteen was it Vic, was Victoria, Victoria yeah. Osteen uh, you know it, it's really all about men pleasing mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know I mean Joel Osteen has actually said you know the reason why I don't talk about sin in my sermons is because you know I, I just I don't want I want to leave people I want to leave them feeling good yeah. he's, he's a man pleaser yeah that's exactly what it is, and so, uh, you know, friends, we're not we're not trying to, uh, you know, win people to us. We're trying to win people to Christ, and if and if that means, you know, if that means uh, serving someone to get them to realize, hey, this is the, this is the gospel. We'll do that, mm -hmm. but we're not going to compromise the truth to do that. Right. And there's plenty of people, and I just love having relationships with individuals who 
uh, you know, they may not be members of the church, but yet they know that, you know, that we are, uh, we have a certain conviction, you know, and even when I, we talk to them, you know, there's, there's one fellow that I'm thinking about in particular. When I talk to him, you know, and we bring up, you know, the Baptist church he's in, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of like, well, yeah, but, but we're still friends when it comes, you know, when yeah. we when part yeah. ways. Yeah. But it's just like he knows that at any moment, you know, the, if the, if it turns to religion mm -hmm. or if there's an opportunity, a door opens up, I'm going to bring it up, yeah. you know, and I'm going to say, you know, my friend, well, think about this. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I just hope those are the kind of uh, relationships that will, you know, eventually turn into uh, people obeying the gospel. So, but friends, one, one thing, getting back to what we're talking about, the tent meeting, that's, that's where you can find, you know, these kind of people, all the members of the Church of Christ in this area especially are, you know, they love your soul, mm -hmm. and that's why they come out, they'll come out and support the tent. You know, they drive, run drive from Martinsville, they drive from Danville to support tents, the tent meetings down here. Uh, they have uh, brethren drive from Oklahoma, from yes. North Carolina, uh, you know, some even, you know, the Marshall tent meeting, uh, New Mexico, New Mexico or Arizona? Arizona. Arizona, okay. Yeah. Um, you know, they're coming from all over. Tennessee, Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, you know, because they realize, hey, this is an event that is getting back to the grassroots of Christianity. Right. And, you know, James, I think that's another part of it is that, you know, going back to this religious welfare, uh, welfare type of thing and the all sufficiency of Christ and, you know, all this laziness, we are actually the only, well, I won't say the only group because there are some preachers out there that still get on certain messages. <clears throat> right. Uh, there are some that will still. Uh, you know, every now and then they'll get to, you know, preaching on drinking or, you know, maybe, you know, smoking or something like that, gambling. You know, there are some of those out there. But we are really the only ones that are emphasizing true change because if you don't change, then, you know, you become a member of the Lord's Church and you still don't change. Well, we also practice what the Bible teaches on church discipline. Right. You know, that's the extent of change that we are trying to promote in our communities. But when you go to these other churches and you hear their messages, there's you know there's mm -hmm. nothing in there that I can apply to my life that I might possibly need to correct. Right. So you just you know you have worldly people going in, you have worldly people coming out, but they feel a little bit better going you know right. coming out than they did going in. Right. And so you know I, I believe that you know to a great degree that's part of the problem that you have with people following Jesus is you know they're used to the Old Testament system. He's coming in saying, okay, you're doing you know these. You're doing A, B, C, D, but here's the true reason as to why you're to be doing it. You know, right. they, they had lost the spiritual aspect of it, so he came in bringing in some change, and change scares people. <clears throat> yeah. But we're trying to get you to change for the better. They want Jesus for a certain thing. Mm -hmm. You know, in, that in their mind, this is what they want or what they need, and that's what they want. And it reminds me of John 6, 26, where Jesus said, You know, Brad, I said to you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, mm -hmm. but because you did eat of the loaves. And we're filled. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, they come to Jesus with certain things in mind. Uh, just the other day, my wife was uh, talking to a young man, and he, uh, uh, you know, found out that uh, she was a preacher's wife, you know. And so <laughs> he was. First lady. Uh, well, yeah, he didn't say that, but anyway, he was. Uh, 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 he said, well, he said, I need, I need to find me a, you know, a, a, a good church, you know. And so she said, you know, buddy, we'll come down to the, you know, 250 the Boulevard where we meet, whatever. And mm -hmm. he said, uh, he said, well, I, I went over to a, he looked at her, he said, you're not Mormons, are you? She said, no. He said, well, I went to the Mormon church, and, you know, they wanted me to give up smoking and drinking and things like that. And, but my wife said, well, you know, you know, the Bible says you need to, you need to, you know, uh, you need to give up some things in order to, you know, have godliness and so yeah. forth. And, and, um, and so anyway, he said, oh, no, you know, you're going to get, get rid of my smoking and my, my, my beer, you know, it's like. Well, what do you want? Right. You know, what you want right. is a bar. Right. You know, you don't want a church. You yeah. want a bar. Yeah. And, and that's really what a lot of these churches are. They're yeah. bars. I mean, they got kitchens in them. They got the entertainment in them. Yeah. I mean, Starbucks coffee yeah. and, you know, a bistro, you know, yeah. a deli in there. You go get your sandwich and go back in. and You got you your know. gymnasium and yeah. your 22-foot, you know, kids' playground yeah. uh, indoor tree, you mm -hmm. know, tree house. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a social club. It's not really, it's not really anything life-changing. Mm hmm you know, it's just really like a, uh, I don't know, a, a, a spiritual uh, heroin dose, yeah. you know, shot. And it's like, well, you got to find something, something to give you a little higher, yeah. you know, so they go to the, the next biggest and greatest thing in, uh, in religion. So, 
Well, you bring up uh, John chapter 6, made me think of an earlier passage in John chapter 6 and verse verse 15, where you actually have the people doing, you know, exactly what you were what you were saying. You know, they they want to make Christ something of their own. Mm-hmm. Well, during this time, when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, there you have, I mean, even in Jesus' day, right. you have people, and I've, I actually have a, a sermon that I've developed on this, they were, you know, they were actually going to you know, lay hands on Christ and try to push him, force him into being something that he is not at all supposed to be. And that was an, an earthly king. And like you said, people are still doing that today. Right. They are taking Jesus, and they're practically making Jesus their little personal idol. Right. You know, we'll make Jesus into whatever we want him to be. You know, like Victoria was saying, you know, when we're in here worshiping, it's 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 about us. It's not about God. Right. Well, that's that's taking God by force and making him your idol, right. and trying to compact him into okay. Well, what makes me happy? Well, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and you know, before you know it, it's you know that's that's not God. That's, and, uh, that's something completely different. Yeah, and then like I was saying about a drug and what a drug yeah, does. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm gonna take this drug because it makes me feel a certain way. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna take the God drug. Yeah. Well, you know, we don't advocate uh, drugs, but you know, if you really want a, a good uh, a feeling, I mean, and I know that that this, you know, the the truth does produce a feeling. I mean, the Bible says that when people obey the truth, they went on their way withdrawing. Mm-hmm. You know, they gladly receive His word, yep. and that's because you mm-hmm. know what. You're doing what God says, but you know the only drug that uh, we try to give you is the gospel, mm-hmm. you know, and so uh, that's the only prescription we have for you. But uh, well, speaking of, of worship and, and and things like this, uh, I saw this sign, Micah, and uh, I I just thought it was humorous because I know it's it's a it's an accident, but at the same time, I think there's a whole lot of truth to it. Uh, this was a sign outside, and I don't remember the name of the. Uh, I don't remember the name of the church. It's it's the old it's the old dance studio. Uh, interesting enough, uh, there in Martinsville, right across from the old city hall. Uh, someone might call in and tell me where that where, uh, what the name of it is. In Martinsville? No, I'm sorry. It's in Eden. Okay. It's in Eden. But uh, it says, "Come worship, Pastor M. Dickerson." Now I'm sure they meant they missed some uh, uh, come worship with Pastor Dickerson or whatever, but you know it speaks volumes there. Mm-hmm. You know you miss a little, uh, you know, uh, exclamation point or whatever, and it's come worship Pastor Dickerson. Yeah. Now, isn't that really what a lot of lot of uh, religious denominational uh, worship is about? Isn't it worshiping the pastor? Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, the fact that you you come in there and you know everybody's swaying back and forth and then you know when the preacher gets up there and even with some you know some congregations now you know let's let's give him a hand mm-hmm. you know let's let's give <clears throat> let's get up and let's let's praise the preacher well what you know who cares about the preacher you know even though James and I are standing before you this evening what about the message right you know was the message worth anything and you know I can understand you know to some degree you're wanting to let the people know uh, who is coming you know like with uh, our tents in the past if, if John is coming you know, we like to tell people that John is mm-hmm. coming, but the reason why we tell people John is coming is because a lot of people have, you know, realize the type of preaching that John does. Right. You know, whether it be through internet or coming to the tents in the past, so that we, so that you know, when John is coming, okay, he's, you know, yeah. you know what kind of preaching to expect. And so, you know, I can kind of see what they're doing there, but at, but when you get into these assemblies, I mean, it's just, you know, it's all about the right. man. Right. It's all about. Well, I'm gonna play you. I'm gonna play a video of of the type of thing we're talking about in just a moment. Let's let's take this phone call. All right. Uh, and Matt, you can go ahead and put the phone numbers up if you want to. It'd be fine. You're on the word of the Lord. Yes, sir. Could you tell me the scriptures in the New Testament where it speaks on or where it don't speak on about uh, you don't where you don't have to pay tithes. And where it says, what, what do you give or, okay. uh, we'll give or those, how you prosper. You know what I'm talking uh-huh. about. Right, we'll give those to you right quick. First Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2, Paul says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the church of Galatia, and that word order, by the way, is, it means commandment. I've given order to the church of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, 
that every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him that there be no gathering when I come. So the commandment was on the first day of the week they laid by in store for this particular uh, work of the church. In this case, it was the uh, uh, you know benevolence, you might say. And so they did it on the first day of the week. That's when the, they were to do it, lay by in store as God has prospered them. All right, so... If you if you've prospered that week, you ought to realize, hey, that blessing comes from God. Uh, God's giver of all blessings, so we're going to give back to God. Some people get a lot of blessings. They may not give get monetary blessings, but they're blessed during the week, and they they don't recognize or don't uh, choose not to give back to God uh, because of that blessing. But here here's the verse on the first day of the week. Now there's one more we'll show you right quick. Second Corinthians nine. And I'm going to start in verse 6. Paul says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Verse 7, Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. So now here's the commandment to give, is as, God, as a man purposes in his heart, uh, he's supposed to give. So, as God has prospered you, and as you purpose, that's how you give. There's no, there's no commandment there to give a certain amount or to tithe. But, you know, I'd say as, as rich as we've been blessed and as much as goodness as we have received from God, I mean, why would you even think about uh, starting at a tenth? I mean, why wouldn't you give far above that? You know, and so, you know, that's what, that, that's what I would say to members of the church. Now, of course, we never ask for money, but uh, but I would say if, if, you know, if you're in a man-made church, you ought to give a whole lot less than a tenth because <laughs> you're not getting anything, you're not getting your money's worth, that's for sure, you know. So uh, the, I hope that helped you. I hope that helped you, ma'am. Is there a place uh, where it says after, the, after Jesus is crucified, is there a place that says... Um, under the new law, that the tenth is no longer. Well, this is after this is in the new law, First Corinthians uh, sixteen one and two, and Second Corinthians nine. So we know that Christ nailed the old law to the tree. He nailed, he took it away, nailed it to the cross. So uh, not specifically those words, but this is in the New Testament. So. That would take care of all the tithing in the Old Testament. Okay? Okay. All right. So suppose, um, suppose if you're um, very poor. Okay. And, and you... Have you prospered? Well, what I'm saying, suppose you're a very poor person and you're, very, and you're making it by, uh, by, by the skin of your teeth. And okay, but well, my say here's you come, say you volunteer to come to the church and you do all kinds of things at the church that right. needs to be done, right? Well, I would say, uh, ma'am, here's my, here's my answer. I see what you're going, I see where you're going, and here's what I'm saying if you've prospered monetarily, then you should give monetarily. But everybody prospers every week, 168 hours. I mean, you have 168 hours in a week. And so if you can give your time, you can give of yourself. I mean, Paul said the Corinthians, uh, said to the Corinthians, he said the folks in Achaia gave of themselves mm -hmm. first. So if you can give of yourself, then there's a lot of things you can do with your time that money can't buy. So, you know, I would recommend, I would highly suggest you know, people, especially people in the in, brethren uh, in the Lord's church. Now, you you folks out there in the denominations, I wouldn't I wouldn't waste my time in the denomination. You know, I wouldn't go down and work for the pastor or whatever. But but if you're in the Lord's church, certainly a Christian should should uh, uh, give of their time. You know, and so that's what our brethren do. They help put up the tent. They are door knocking. You know, uh, bringing uh, uh, provisions to help with. Uh, uh, feeding the door knockers, or uh, you know, helping uh, you know bring water so that people come out in a hot tent, they can have something to drink. Things. I mean, all these things are these are things that people give of themselves. So, 
To answer your question is yes. You know, giving of your time is, is suitable. Okay? We're going we're gonna to move on. Thanks for your okay. call, okay? Okay. Okay, thanks for your call. All right. So, uh, I mean, that's, you know, I think that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you give up your time, and, and uh, th that's that's certainly what you've been uh, blessed with. Now, uh, Micah, this is one, one thing we were talking about was praising uh, praising the uh, the pastor. You know, come worship the pastor. Mm -hmm. Now, listen to this. Uh, uh, this is Mark Price up in uh, Martinsville. And uh, I want to see if we can whoop this over here. It's just about 30 seconds. I hope it, hope it audio, it's an old video clip, so I hope that it, it will actually play. And it may not. At this time, let us receive our pastor, the Minister Marquis Price Senior, Mother Gertrude Harrison, and the Pulpit Associates. Let me, let me rewind that because he's he's introducing Mark Price. At this time, let us receive our pastor, the Minister Marquis Price Senior. Mother Gertrude Harrison and the Poor Pet Associates. Let us receive our pastor, the Minister Mark E. Price Sr., Mother Gertrude Harrison, and the Pulpit Associates. Let us receive our pastor, the Minister Mark E. Price Sr., Mother Gertrude Harrison, and the Pulpit Associates. When you put that in context, we're singing, praising my Savior all the day long, and then we'll, we'll announce Mark E. Price and Mother, <laughs> Mother Gertrude Harrison. Now, who's, who's really being prayed here? Yeah. You know, so that's why I thought when I saw that, that sign, they're praising them all the day long for sure. So, uh, you know, it just made me think, well, maybe maybe that wasn't a uh, Freudian slip, or maybe it was. I don't know. Well, and, you know, that, that brings, again, the, the understanding that, you know, phrases, sentences, word structure, they they right. all play a part you know yeah. it's very important even though our society and you know everybody's trying to downplay what certain words mean you know they're actually going so far as to even try to change certain definitions yeah. i mean you know just you know just this for an example you know you might think this is silly but you know people will actually start thinking you know they'll think this way when they read this kind of stuff come worship pastor m dickerson well that's well you know that's his church yeah you know it's it's his assembly and we're it using, might be a her, I don't know. Yeah, it could be. And so, you know, his or her church, his or her assembly, and we're using though that pronoun usage for a reason because that's really what denominationalism is. Those churches, those congregations, those assemblies, they belong to the men or women who are in charge. And, you know, James, we have met that so many times. When we walk into these buildings, it's apparent that they mm -hmm. think that yeah. whoever walks into this assembly, I own you. Yeah. You know, by the way yeah. they treat us and how they, you know, want to handle us, you know, actually putting their hands on us and everything like that. Well, I run the devil out of my church. Right, and exactly. My and, church, and, my and, you church. know, the, the people just sit by and they, they don't do anything about it. Yeah. And which, I mean, if that's the kind of person that they're under, I would be afraid to, you know, do, do something about it also. Right. You're on the word from the Lord. Yes, hello. How are you this evening? Very well. How are you? 
All right, I have a question that's been bugging me for years. Okay. Yeah. Is it Second Timothy 3.16 that says all uh, Scripture is the inspiration of God or God breathed? Yes. Yes. So then how is it that everybody uh, in all churches and denominations are saying everything was mistranslated? It should be this or it should be that. How can that be? Well, I would say a lot of times the reason why they say that typically is because it goes against something that they want to do. I, I would ask, do, do you have an example of something that they would say? Yeah, that... I have an example. Uh, someone from the Church of Christ said that uh, when they were talking about baptism, uh, translated from the Greek word, baptismo, the third time they translated it, they didn't translate it into uh, baptismal being uh, dumped under water because they knew they couldn't sell Bibles. Now, what, what is that? Well, how, how can man? But, how can man make an assumption like that if it is God breathed? I, well, I can't understand that. Yeah. Well, I'd say the word, the the thing about bab, bab, baptizo, or any variation of that baptism, is it's really not translated at all. It's transliterated. In other words, it's act, it actually looks more like the Greek word than the English word. If it was translated, right. it would actually be yeah, immersed. Right. But, uh, you know, it's why they did it, I, I don't know. But uh, they didn't really change it for a reason, as opposed to, say, where we well, talked well, to the... Oh, wait a second. If it was God breathed, how could they change it? That's well, question. You know I'm saying that they're changing the... They're they're changing the definition of it is what typically what people yes, do. Yes, and that was from that was from the Church of Christ that uh, told me that, and also the Church of Christ representative said when I said in my opinion, they accused me of attacking someone, but yet two weeks later they were on TV and they said to a caller in my opinion. Well, I don't. But, I don't yeah, I was wrong, but they're right. Well, maybe if, if you're asking about what is truth, about, you know, what what should I do in, in, concerning my salvation, then we wouldn't want opinion. But, I mean, certainly no, no, no. you're no, entitled to opinion. Talking about, we're talking about when I said in my opinion, I was accused of... About of what, though? Your opinion someone, about what? And, and yet, two weeks later, the man gets on TV and says... But, but sir, uh, what, uh, your uh, opinion about my what? Opinion. Your opinion about it what? Okay. okay, I'm asking you again. Your opinion about what? What were you giving your opinion well, we about? We were talking about preaching false doctrine. Okay, so you're saying something is false doctrine in your opinion? Was that? In my opinion. But when I said it was my opinion, I was accused of attacking. Okay. But the well, man, same man got on TV okay. all right. a couple I, weeks I heard later that. and said it okay. was his opinion, and all it right. was all I right. All right. That makes sense to me. Okay. Well, all I'm saying is if you're saying, in my opinion, this is false doctrine, then... That's really not valid. Valid. You can go to the Bible no, to see if no, it's false doctrine. It's your own opinion. Okay. But why well, should you be accused of attacking someone? I don't know, sir. I wasn't there. And saying, All right. uh, that, Dale. Uh, on TV, Dale. That's, that's their opinion, and that's okay. Okay. I don't know, Dale. I wasn't there. I wasn't privy to the conversation, I, so I, I don't know. I'll tell you what. Sir, I, I, believe, I, I believe you were trying to teach the right thing and uh, most everything. But you have done the most to make me wonder about the Bible, uh, whether it's right or not, well, than anybody else. All right. Well, all. Yeah, I'm I'll telling you. About that. Okay. All, well, uh, listen. All scriptures give me a question. You're going to say this should be translated this way. Okay. Or it should have been translated Sorry. that way. All right. Well, I'm. All right. We're going to have a conversation here. Hello. All right. Are we going to have a conversation? It just isn't right. Are we going to have a conversation or? Uh, we can't let you have a monologue here. The Bible... Hey, what, the, you, uh, what, what is it that you don't want me to talk? What do you want to say? I thought we were having a conversation. This is not a call-in program for we you to take too. over. It's a call-in... You ask a question, and then you won't, let me, you won't even let us answer. That's, that's, answer, that's the problem. Answer, please. Answer, please. All right, I'm trying to do that. The, in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture given by inspiration of God. All scripture exactly. is breathed by God, and therefore every word is true. Now, exactly. it, it's, 
but it's translated from one language to another. So there's going to be some times when maybe a better word could have been used, but that doesn't yeah. change the meaning of the word, all right? Yes, immersion would have been a better word used than bab baptism, you know? Gosh, but that doesn't that. change the meaning of baptism. You just have to realize, all right, this is actually a transliterated word, and I can still get a meaning. It didn't change the word. Now, the difference right. is when you have something like the Mormons or the Jehovah's Witness, they come along, and then they say, well, the Bible's true I'm in, as, to, in, as, much, in as much as the Bible. I'm just talking about the Bible. Okay, I'm uh, talking about, and I'm trying to show uh, you. Leave denominations out of it. All right. All right. Well, I don't know how to do that another, to give you an example. So, you don't listen, know how to do that. I don't, All right. You're, you're, I'm, I'm, you asked me. Again. Okay. Here's my question again. How is it that the Church of Christ, our representatives, are saying it should have been translated this way or that way? What? And, what? Sh what should okay, have? Okay, now wait a second. Now wait a second. How is it that man would know better than God-inspired people to put down the, the, the word as God inspired them? That's but, what I cannot understand. Well, I'm saying you have to know the depth. If you know the, the meaning of the word, the original word, then you can translate it accurately. If you know the meaning of baptism, oh, yeah. then oh, you yeah. can put down immersion. But, that, but, that's but fair. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying uh, you and other uh, denominations are coming out and saying that, well, they mistranslate this. It should be that. They mistranslate this. For example, give that. another example. That's give an example. Case. I've got to take the first, first word in the Bible in and wonder if that was uh, right, you know? Well, the, if, you don't, if you don't trust your English version, then what you need to do is you need to get, the, you need to get a, a Hebrew, and you need to get a, a Hebrew Old Testament and a Greek New Testament and learn that language. I wish I, I, wish I could. I really do. But I'm saying, I I but I'm saying just because you change, you, you translate a, the Bible from, from Greek to English does not mean you have changed the meaning of the words. I understand that, but okay. what I'm saying is people are coming out and saying it should have been translated this way. Well, in some cases way, it should have. In some cases the words are not translated accurately, like the word Easter. The only place... Yeah, no, the no, I've, heard that, I've heard that three times. Okay, well here's and, the fourth time. Uh, Easter, uh, wasn't that uh, the pagan um, observance of so, uh, Passover? Right, but so not, it wasn't the pagan but, observance no. of Passover. See, Easter is not a pagan uh, holiday. It is a pagan holiday. Yes, but you're trying to throw Passover in there, and that's that's not no, no, Passover. What what holiday uh, in Christianity was that associated with? Pas hmm. Passover is not associated with Christianity. Okay, so there's none in that. All right. Well, what's, I'm, what I'm saying, sir, is the now. word the word that is translated Easter, everywhere else in the Bible is translated Passover. Now, why why throw Easter in there? I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 but I'm uh, saying, but I'm saying, I don't throw I the Bible out. I don't throw the Bible out just because someone translated it Easter. That doesn't have anything to do with with the Bible. See that? I just recognize. All right, that word, that word is not a good translation. So I'm going to read it Passover. I understand it's Passover, and I go on. I don't go well. Let's throw the whole Bible out because I don't. You know they, they uh, didn't translate that one word right. If you go if you go to a foreign country, you may translate a word that incorrectly, but that doesn't mean that. You okay. Okay. Well, in a way, I've got it hung up because we were, we were burning precious mm -hmm. time there. Okay, well, I'll just let's just drop that and move on. Let's well, get back. I think back. there's another one right, right behind you. All right. Here. You want to work from the Lord? Yes, sir. Uh, I like to thank a lot of Johnny and y'all do that preaching. Y'all are back to good Lord. Y'all do a good job. And I tell you, I don't know what that man was talking about. Just called in a while ago. I don't judge people, but I know what miracles are. Because God brought me back 15 years ago. I was in a coma, they said, at the hospital. I wouldn't live, but that's up to the good Lord. And I know I stayed in a wheelchair for about eight months, and I couldn't walk. 
but I pray to the good Lord to let me out of that wheelchair, and he did. He blessed me, well, and he, ble he gave me a good family. I mean, I know we don't have it. A oh, good Sam. That woman that called in a while ago and said she didn't have much. Uh, you have but a that question? Doesn't matter. You have a question, sir? Yes. As long as they got Jesus in their side. And that's, now, that's, now, where's the Bible verse for that? You're gonna make a statement like that, and I, I'm glad. I'm glad that you're out of a coma. And I'm glad, you know, your your health is is better than it was. But you know, let's. You're gonna make some statements about miracles and. And all they need is Jesus. We need some. We need to hear some Bible from that. Can you give us some scripture on that? Hold on a second, sir. Well, I don't have really a second. I've, I'm running out of time. We spent a lot of time with the last caller, and I'm, I'm just asking you for. Can you give me a Bible verse? Yes, sir. I understand. I okay. I just don't know many statements, sir. I'm right. Not that. Not that good. Cause well, there's no problem. No, nothing wrong with that. You know, all, all we're saying is, you know, when people call in and make a statement, you know, if we make a statement, people expect us to give a, a Bible verse. I've been studying up on the Bible, sir. All right. Well, I've been, come out to the I've been, yeah. I've been, I've been well, studying up on it. Okay. Well, I tell you what, sir, it's a good opportunity. Uh, we can meet you. Come out to the tent. If you're able, come out yes, to sir. the tent starting Monday night. goes through 50, the 15th through the 26th. And, you know, yes, sir. there's some good study. Sure we, put the, we put the scripture Johnny up on the screen. There. So you can read, you know, follow along with the Bible right on the screen. You know that when someone says uh, the Bible says, they put it right on the screen, and, and there it is. So, yeah. uh, Yes, sir. Would Johnny be there? I'm pretty sure he'll be there. Yes, sir. I'm pretty sure. Yes, so, sir. Well, I hope y'all fellas have a good night. Y'all right. keep doing like y'all doing because I can feel a Holy Spirit when y'all are preaching. Well... We, I would I would have to ask what does that feel like because I you know you know and, and again sir you know I'm, I'm not trying to pick I'm not trying to make fun but you know again if you're, if if we're going to make statements then I you know I need to have some type of you know biblical evidence to you know to show that in fact this is something that we should be saying you know First Peter chapter four and verse eleven we're told that if any man speak let him speak as the oracles of God. So if you know if we're going to say something that's uh, going to be directed towards you know religious uh, uh, ideology or Christianity, we need to make sure that we're saying things that are appropriate, you know, lining up with the Bible. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and sir, that, that's another thing too. You know, you said you're studying these things out, and so apparently you've you've heard a lot of things. You know, you've you've been listening to some preachers or whatever, and that's you know I'm glad that people are interested in spiritual things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the problem is sometimes people listen to so-called spiritual leaders and those folks don't actually give them the Bible. And so they start repeating what they hear yes, and, and find out it's really not in the Bible. I mean, have you ever heard that phrase, cleanliness is next to godliness? Yes, sir. Do, do you think that's in the Bible? Yes, sir. It's not. Oh, it's not. No, see? And that's a, that's a good example of how we hear things all along say, well, that, yes, that sounds sir. good. Maybe it's in the Bible. No, it's not in the Bible. And so, hey. you know, so what we're saying is we, we, we try to be very careful when Micah said, if any man speak, then speak as oracles of God. We want to make sure that if we tell you God said to do something, that yes, he said sir. to do it. Because we don't want to tell you more. We don't want to tell you to do something more than what God says. And we don't want to tell you to do less than what God says. So... Sir. Uh, that's why we're trying to help people. So, yes, sir. So, I, so come out to the tent. Come out you know, to the we'll, tent. We'll discuss some of the stuff, and we'll, you know, we'll try to work through it. Can you tell me? Will you tell me your first name? And uh, Jason. Jason. All right. Well, I hope Jason. I hope you'll come out to the tent. And yes, if you sir. come out to the tent, and say, "Hey, I'm Jason. I talked to you on the phone. We'll know who you are." Yes, sir. God bless you. Okay. Have a good night. You too, man. You know, my, I just, I, I really. Uh, that, that's a good call to end on. Yes, sir. Uh, we're, we're running up against the clock. We've just got a few minutes left here. Uh, if we had another phone call, we would take it. But uh, that's a good end on. Just the fact that, uh, you know, here's an example. People think, well, that's in the Bible. You know, the, the preacher said it, therefore it must be in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not in the Bible. You know, so there may be, you need to start thinking about, well, maybe what I've been hearing all this time is really not in the mm -hmm. Bible. You know, there may, how many things have the preacher, has mm -hmm. the preacher said that is really not in the Bible? Right. So, I mean, that may be a, 
working on a sermon right there. Yeah. You know. And you know, I, I guess that could be you know the other part of it, James, as to the reason why you know some people have trouble with with us on here. You know, like the one caller. Okay, something you've said has caused you know some doubt to creep into my mind. Well, like with that caller there, you know, okay, this preacher has told me something before, but now you're telling me something that's causing me to doubt. Mm -hmm. You know, something that I'm, uh, you know, really when it comes to God, you know, I think a lot of people have this idea that, you know, you shouldn't doubt God, that you should not question God. Well, where, you know, again, where's that in the Bible? Mm -hmm. John the baptizer, when he's in prison, sent out men to Jesus asking him, you know, are you the one that we're searching for? Do we wait another, yeah. wait for another? And that's after he had said in John in uh, John's account, "Behold, the Lamb of God right. that's come to the, uh, come to take away the sin of the world." And it just shows that your faith can get weak, and you need some re reaffirming. Yeah. And faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So, the only way to increase your faith and have confidence that what you believe is really in the Bible yeah. is by studying the Bible. That's right. So don't you know? So don't let yeah. uh, anything we say you know that causes you to question. Don't just throw it to the side. Right. You know, Just, invest, investigate. That's right. That's right. Look at this. Uh, in Luke 1, I, I believe I, I, I like this, uh, of what, what Luke is saying. He says, for, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Mm. So there are some people that were writing. They're writing some things down. Luke says to Theophilus, he says, uh, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were our witnesses and ministers of the word. So, they're writing things down, but we were eyewitnesses of it. Mm -hmm. So he says, it seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding of all these things from the very first to write down in order why that thou mightest know of certainty yep. of things wherein thou hast been instructed. And so there are some people, apparently Luke is saying, you know, there's some people that are writing things down and they don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I need to set some things in order because I was there from the very beginning and I can write it down and I can help you out so that you have confidence and you can have certainty of the things you've been instructed. So, uh, you know, these folks that have been in the denominations, they've been hearing a lot of things and what we're saying is, you know what, maybe they don't really know what they're mm -hmm. talking about. Let's mm -hmm. go back to, to the real, you know, to the gospel here and, and find out the real truth here. Yep. So, uh, well, Michael, we're out of time. Uh, I do want to put this up before we go. Folks, let me remind you that in, during the tent meeting, we're going to be on TV every night. All right, every night here on uh, WGSR. I'm trying to get the, uh, my screen here. Here's the TV times, uh, Monday through Friday. All right, every night. There's at least one hour TV, a word from the Lord, is going to be on every night. So if you can't make it to the tent, be sure, sure to tune in WGSR 47.1. Thanks for watching, friends. Michael, good to be with you. Thanks for having me. I look forward to spending more time with you. Probably be on TV again during the tent meeting. So, All right. Till next time, remember, ask what does the Bible say? And you'll always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. Of ceremonies were held today in order to mark that occasion. That happening 13 years ago, those terrorist attacks against the United States where thousands of people lost their lives. Local ceremonies were held, including the Piedmont Triad area of North Carolina and Southside Virginia. And in our first segment, we're going to cover Rockingham County. Star News Zone Matt Smith had the chance to cover the 9-11 Remembrance Ceremony that was held at Market Square in Reedsville. It was put together by the Reedsville Fire Department, and here's that video.